Welcome back, everybody, to Two Guys in a Stack of Comics. Hope your 2024 is going well so far. I'm Reed. Along with me is Mike. Mike, how you doing, sir? I'm doing great. I'm so glad to be talking about comics. I'm glad that work is done for the day. <laughs> yep. No, always good to get the end of that work day and be able to talk comics for a bit. So Absolutely. Um, well, we want to talk a little bit about today. The DCEU is done. It, it's over. Um, finished up 16 movies. Aquaman was the last kind of salvo of it. Uh, but we do know DC has plans to continue through a DC universe or the DCU. Uh, James Gunn was announced to take over that and kind of be the head of it. Um, we know so far Superman Legacy has already gotten cast. It hasn't started filming yet. That's the one that's going right now. We'll go through a little bit here. What we want to do today is just kind of go through the projects that have been announced. Talk about if we think any of these will actually end up happening. And then if those aren't going to happen what do we think they could do to actually make dc successful i have not you're going to hit me with these fresh for the first time i have no knowledge i've just heard rumors i know about the superman thing is already filming and we also know batman is filming with uh pattinson but yeah <clears throat> that's somehow outside the news. Yes. So what Gunn announced is there's going to be a main DC universe, and then there will be a Elseworlds, which will be stuff like Pattinson's Batman, um, Teen Titans Go, anything like that, that will be completely separate. Uh, but then he's going to have like a main DCU to rival what the MCU was. So the only movie that really has any progress on it, because he's announced five movies and five shows, the only movie with any progress on it is Superman Legacy, which has its Superman cast, its Lex cast, its Lois has been cast. They've cast a couple other superheroes in there as well. Um, and that one is supposed to come out in 2025. The other movies he's announced should happen are The Brave and the Bold, which would be a Batman movie featuring him and Damian Wayne, a Supergirl movie, a Swamp Thing movie, and then a movie about the authority, which is a 90s wild storm team that has a light connections to DC. So I'm not okay, sure about so that one. Do you want me to list in probability how likely any of these are going to get made? The is Superman it... Legacy is 100%. I think that's the only right. one we know. Mm -hmm. That one's about to start filming. I would say I think Batman Brave and the Bold is probably 100% too. I have a hard time imagining they'll cancel a Batman film. Yeah. Um, everything else in my book is going to be scrapped because superhero movies are gone. I'm sad to say, because I yeah. love them. Even the bad DC movies was better than any other movie that was out mm -hmm. there. Although I wish they would have been different. I wish it would have been better. But I think I would hope and pray Brave and the Bold. But I think that's on the chopping block because okay. I think none of them, I don't think any of them are going to get made <laughs> I'm sorry to say the authority. Come on, Supergirl. Yeah, I, I think the thing is, I would is, love to see a good Supergirl movie. Yes, but no, it's not going to get made. Yeah, I, I think I think <clears> there's <throat> a chance that three of them get made. I think the other two won't. I think my guess is Superman Legacy will do okay. I don't. I think if they keep the budget reasonable, and if James Gunn can deliver a good Superman movie, I imagine so we're going to do he, we're going to do a live action Brave and the Bold. Yep. With Damian Wayne as Batman. Damian, no, Damian's Robin, Bruce is Batman. Oh, we are going to so, have a Bruce Wayne Batman. Yeah, so Bruce oh, Wayne good. Batman with Damian. I think Brave and the Bold 100% is going to happen. That one are already has a director attached already. Um, I think the other ones, the only other one that I could see possibly happening, if Superman Legacy is really successful, which I don't know if it will be, I think there's a chance Supergirl could happen. But I just don't know. And I think the authority and Swamp Thing, look, I, I love Swamp Thing. Me Alan Ford did such a great job on that character. I thought the TV show that the DC Universe did a couple years ago was Did you see fun. that? Yeah. That I, show I was, was awesome. I thought it was good, especially for a limited budget. Yeah. I, I just, I don't know how in the, the time that we are right now that you toss a Swamp Thing movie out there. In that maybe because it's so different, it could work. But I just, I don't see how, with the way superhero movies are doing, that you can toss out some of these films. And that the way that, I mean, we're not talking these movies losing a little bit of money. We're talking like Shazam losing $100 million. The Flash losing like $100 million. 
Um, Aquaman 2, I think, is it's ticking up, but it's still going to lose a good 50 to $70 million. I just don't know how you toss Swamp Thing or The Authority or Supergirl even out yeah. to that environment. You know, the Supergirl, the Swamp Thing, and The Authority, if, okay, if the DCU was rocking mm -hmm. right along with Marvel all along yeah. for these last 20 years, and they were like show for show, show for show, yeah. you know, 800 million, billion dollars, 800 million, a billion dollars. That yeah. was when you could have thrown in a Swamp Thing movie, an authority, yeah. you could try it out. And it would have done a little bit like Ant-Man Wasp or something. You know what I mean? But DC just never got there. So like no, I mean DC these... struggled getting Batman and Superman to work. They couldn't get the Justice League <clears throat> to be successful. And I, I think the sad thing is, I actually think if Gunn had been given the reins five or six years ago, which who knows, they they would have never been able to, but I do think James Gunn could have made DC successful. I just don't know that it's a marketplace where this is gonna work. No, it's gonna and be very tough. I, I think um, you could make a successful Superman film. I think Batman Brave and the Bold will be successful. I don't know about any of the others. And I think the thing is, what I what I do hope the DCU does is, look, I, I think it's great to experiment with other characters. It's not the place to do it right now. You got to deliver the hits. You got to go out and you got to get money rolling into these things again. And you got to be careful. And you can't saturate the market anymore like you could 10 years ago. Yeah. You got to you got to strategically plan these and you got to put them out like once every 2 to 5 years. Yeah, I, I think the and thing until is until the market could, comes back. Yeah. Well, the thing is I think the other part where I think there is a genuine mistake that that Gunn and them are making. Um while I will I'm extremely excited to see Pattinson's second Batman. Me I too. think releasing another Batman with that Batman. I as much as I'll be there for it, and I think it's fantastic. The thing with these comic book movies is if you're going to have a two, three hundred million dollar budget, you need everybody going. You need mom, dad, kids, and grandma buying a ticket for that thing to make a billion dollars. And the problem is once you have a Batman with Pattinson and then you have another Batman with Pattinson, then, the, okay, here's another Batman, but it's not the Pattinson Batman, and it's not Ben Affleck's Batman, and it's not the Michael Keaton Batman that was just on screen. You're gonna get people where it's like, what are we doing? And yeah, I think it's I think it's a tricky, slippery slope. And I think <clears throat> if I were gun and um I had a meeting with the bean counters, I'd be like, I get that you know Pattinson's Batman wasn't a part of the old DCU, but it's gotta be the new one. Yeah. Let's just why? Why are we doing two Batmans? Come on, let's be well, smart think, about it. You got to so be funny really that history smart repeats about itself it. in that, you know, what killed, I thought killed the DCEU that just failed. Batman was in such a successful series of films with Chris Nolan that were grounded and everybody loved that we couldn't use Batman to start our new universe. That's like you guys have created almost the exact same scenario where you have a financially successful, critically successful and fan approved Batman in Pattinson. And while I don't think he's to the level of Nolan, you certainly have an established successful Batman already. And you're just voluntarily being like, nope, that's separate. We're not going to have that in our main universe. I, I just, I just I think, don't understand it. I think it'd be a huge mistake for them to believe that, <clears throat> that you can go these multiple different ways. Mm -hmm. You just can't because we have to stop thinking as comic book movie fans and like I said, even the bad DC movies, I still liked them. I'd yeah. still rather see a bad DC movie than most any other movie. I mm -hmm. love to see the characters. I don't care if it was, uh, you know, the the Harley Quinn one, the Birds of Prey, <laughs> um, you know, uh, I, the Love and Thunder, although it was awful, if you just, if you rinse the, the story that you knew, as Jane Foster is uh, Thor, yeah. Thor, if you rinse that out of your mind and just pretended and you didn't know about, you know, it was still better than anything else that I wanted to go see. 
yeah, they stunk. But anyways, yeah, it's a great genre, but that day is past. And if you think that you can go multiple different ways, we're, gone are the days when we're going to have, you know, 20 projects lined up and 10 are going to get greenlit for 2025. Yeah. yeah, those days are gone. Well, I just think it's a mistake in terms of, and, and look, the hardcore superhero fans, you and me, we're going to be there for it, right? Yeah. I'll be there opening day for both Batman universes. You could have 27 different Batman films releasing in a year, and my butt's going to be in the seats opening weekend on each and every one of those. Me too, but but that's not going to make that's you. That's not how it million, works. And you need, million bucks. I think the thing is, like, you would never, and, and this is where I think superheroes always made this mistake. They, I think they they looked at the Spider Man movie that made so much money, and they thought, oh my gosh, this multiverse thing is huge. The problem with that is those Spider-Mans are all relatively new enough. And that Toby's, what, 20 years ago? And then his last one was yeah. 2007. Garfield was done in 2014. And then you had Holland in like 2017. They were all relatively new enough that we all wanted to see them still. I think the thing is, we've seen that trick now. We've seen the multiverse stuff. We've seen you bring back the old actors. It's now old. We've seen it too many times. And the thing is to think you're going to have multiple competing universes it's just ridiculous. And then, like, I can't imagine next year, you know, the Bro the Broccoli's and Eon going, we're going to have a James Bond with, you know, Henry Cavill. But then there's also going to be another James Bond series with Tom Hardy. But they're not the same James Bond. No, the audience is like, who's Bond? Which one is Bond? Like, why is this? And, and you may have the audience pick one to the other, but you would never have. We're like, we're going to have two competing James Bonds against each other. They're smarter than that over there. Yeah, James and it's Bond. like... And I get what Gunn's trying to do. You certainly don't want to do a DC universe with no Batman. But the thing is, you either have to kill the Pattinson universe or incorporate it. You can't keep you gotta incorporate Pattinson it because and... At this, at this stage of the game, you have to take any advantage you can get. Yeah. You have to limit your green lights down to one or two a year. Yep. And you have to take every advantage you can get. And you have to make sure they're done really good and really right, and then go to work and wait another two years for another superhero movie. That's just the way it's going to be. Well, I, I mean, I feel bad for us comic book fans because we've been used to seeing four, five, six movies a year, maybe two, three DC movies. I mean, we've yep. been... We've I know, been we had movie, eight last year. We have been spoiled. Yep. <clears throat> but those days are gone because the studios can't lose that much money on every movie. Well, and I think the thing is, um, when you look at just movies in general, superhero movies, I think, died more than anything. Low quality, sure, but there was just too much. I think the thing is, and, and you and I are both huge football fans. One of the reasons is I think the NFL is so successful. There's always more demand for football than there actually is football. You get one game a week. You don't have three games a week. You get one game a week, you watch that game, and then the whole week you're talking about that game. When you're, yeah. As a Bears fan and as a guy who likes a bunch of different teams that I've lived in, you know, when the Bears lose a close game or the Colts, another team I love, loses a close game, I sit there the whole week and I'm like, man, you're thinking about that game and that missed field goal or that dropped pass and you're waiting and anticipating that next day and you have six full days. <laughs> you know, right. and then the big thing is, once football season's done after 16, 17 games, you have like seven, eight months no football. And so by the time football starts kicking back up, you're desperate for the draft. You're so ready the agency, for it. And like, man, when is this thing going to kick off? Yeah. I think baseball is the opposite in that you get too much baseball sometimes. And I love baseball. But it's I can't like 100 White games Sox. a year, right? Yeah, there's 162 White Sox games a year. I love the White Sox. I'm not going to carve out time for 162 games a year. Like, yeah. it's just, it's not going to happen. And so the thing is, by the time baseball season's done, you're almost exhausted. But I think that's the big problem the movies have right now is superhero movies. What used to be great a couple of years ago is, man, you're like, when's the next one? When's the next one? Now it's like, okay, well, the next one's next week. And there's a Disney Plus series. And, oh, yeah, DC's got a series on Max. It just became too much. And the thing is, when it's a niche market like comic books, you can kind of make that work by having a once monthly thing because that's a very small market. You need maybe 50,000 people to buy that. When you're making a $200, $300 million movie, you need these things to hit a billion dollars every time. 
and it's just not going to happen. And so yeah. I, I just I think, I'm wondering, um, do you see if any of these will get made? I think the uh, minus one, the Godzilla movie, mm-hmm. like if they can figure out how to, you know, write a decent story and make a movie for, you know, I mean, that so one was $15, like $15 million, million for that movie. Yeah. yeah, they can make, you know, maybe spend $50 million. Well, and... no, I think that's the thing. If Gunn is going to make this successful, you got to have the budget slow. Like one yeah. of the things is it blew up, but like Deadpool was a brilliant gamble. And then I think Ryan Reynolds kept the budget to like 45 or $50 million for Deadpool. And the whole thing is you like if more. Deadpool had made $200 million, it's still a success. Do you like need ended more? Ended up making seven hundred. Um, and I, I think the thing is, I think that's what DC to me, if I was DC, what I would do, um, in this is I would try to focus a less, a little less on the fantastical characters and just make solid action movies with the characters you have. Like one character to me that would make a very easy film, Deathstroke. We have so many action films like John Wick that you can make for a limited budget. Have a movie where Deathstroke has to just kill a bunch of other assassins. And just choreograph the heck out of it with like a John Wick director. You could make a small budget Deathstroke's costumes, not that expensive. Yeah. You could get a B or C list actor because Deathstroke's in a mask most of the time. Yeah. And it would fit with the character. And I think you could make it profitable. Because the whole thing is like, in all honesty, The Flash made $200 million. Most movies that made that would actually be really thrilled. Like some regular thriller that cost two twenty million million bucks to make. If they made $250 million at the box office, people are getting promoted. They're popping champagne. Executives are going crazy. Yeah, yeah. The Flash makes it. It's like, dude, what a bomb. And that's the thing is, I don't think superhero movies have to go. <clears throat> because even the ones that are bombing, making like $200 million bucks. If you just reduce the money down a bit and make character, like Green Arrow is another one. Just have Green Arrow in the forest hunting down a, ba- a pack of thieves or, or murderers or whatever, or terrorists. You could make that move for 25, 30 million bucks. I and think they need to put us on the boards for both Marvel and DC uh, film they, production. And I think DC has a better shot to come back than Marvel. I'd be like, I like your script, but we need to trim the budget down to about 20 million. Well, and I think that's that. the thing is the characters you choose have got to be characters with manageable budgets. As much as I like Swamp Thing, that's not a movie you can do cheaply. No, not a big budget. Not you could do a TV show. <clears throat> it looks fine because your expectations are for a TV show. If I sit down and I pay 50 bucks to take me, my son, and my wife to the movies, I want to see a good looking movie. You can't bring that's me the... CGI. If oh, you're that, talking four I mean, tickets, not to be going to a matinee. <laughs> after popcorn, it's going to be like 150 bucks. Yeah. Yeah, because the so kids they see the candy at the aisle. Can I get some? Oh no, it's always a kick soda. Pop. I want to get some uh, ice cream bites, whatever they are. Yeah, like, the dipping dots or whatever. Yeah, the dipping dots. I'm like, oh my god. No, I think DC to me. I think this is where DC could be successful. Is I think if you manage minimize the budgets, you focus on some smaller characters. I think one of the interesting things is like the Arrowverse was awful because it was a CW. But they did show that you could use smaller movies. Like, I think you could make a very minimal budget flash film. It's a police investigation procedural. Have yeah. 70% of the movie be Barry hunting a serial killer. And then you just need, instead of the action chase scene being a guy running <clears throat> through the woods or whatever, Barry uses his powers. You can manage that. Right. Where and I think I the other up? thing is, you and I have talked about this on this channel before. Some of the movies, and I think superhero movies have gotten afraid of this. One of the movies you and I love is that 2003 Hulk film. What that movie does so well is the quieter moments where it's just Bruce. It's a human story that you care about. I loved it. Same with Godzilla minus one. Yeah. No, and I I think DC with Green Arrow, with Deathstroke, with The Flash, um, Batman, certainly, even Nightwing, Batgirl, all these characters, you could do just make a great detective story and make it batman or, or you know make the, the questions another and you could take some of these characters you did go i like how you threw that in there yeah well that's the thing is i think dc has a chance to be i think there's a better chance for dc to be successful and come back than marvel to me marvel has damaged their brand so much not only that they sold it to 
They sold it to Disney. Well, they sold it to Disney, who's just, you know, crank out. I don't the- know what's going to happen. Although I, I did that- watch most of the first episode of Echo mm-hmm. right before we went on. Yeah. And I must say, that was pretty good. The, the intro was a little bit, I'm like, oh, no, they're not going to go there. The rest of the movie was pretty cool because you know how I feel about the scrolls and the multiverse. I feel like it's, yeah. I feel like it's uh, writers cheating. I really do. Yeah. No, and I think that's what DC <laughs> has to do is keep your budgets low, focus on to the ground stories. And I think that's the weirdest thing that Marvel used to do is Marvel used to tell stories that had superhero action. Now it's superhero action with like a paper thin story. And I think the thing is, I think Marvel's damaged their brand so much that I don't think you can come back. DC to me, because DC never really got going. If they can tell a good Superman story, we haven't seen James Gunn can surprise us with a really good Superman movie, but we're never going back to the days of eight movies a year. No, and I I don't think we we should. And I'll be honest, even for me as a huge superhero fan who goes to the comic store every Wednesday, the movies were too much. The shows were too much. It used to be five years ago, man. There was no chance I was going to miss an episode of a superhero show. Mm-hmm. Now it's like, eh, look, I mean, I'm I'm as nerdy as you're going to get with comic books. And I'm sitting there like, I don't know if I'm going to watch that one. I don't know if it I'm going to. It took gonna... me a while to get through Loki. And I was yeah. like, and I started it and I was like, yeah. And the first season kind of I got confused because I'm not I'm not primarily a Marvel guy. Yeah. Although I love Thor and I love Loki. I love the mythology. Yeah. And I, I remember the old school Kirby Thor Loki, but the show wasn't that for me. And then it went weird. And yeah. I was like, okay, I'm confused. I had to have Jackson kind of explain. <laughs> and you kind of had to explain some things to me. And I was like, oh, okay. <clears throat> and the second season was really good, but um, I didn't, I wasn't excited to watch it. I didn't watch it right away. Um, and then I ended up finishing it and it was good, but yeah. it's just too much. It's too much. No, it's too many things going on. And I think that that's the biggest thing that I, I hope to see out of DCU is pick some characters that you can make manageable stories with that can control the budget. If those are successful, then maybe then you do the big movie, but yeah. trying to do some big $200 million authority film it's never gonna work, man. It's yeah, never right. gonna work. That's dead on arrival. You can you can hear that that's not gonna make a billion dollars. I will predict and mark my words over the next three years, whatever. We've got it on, we've got it on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. So it can never go away. Mark my words. Uh authority will uh be DOA, mm-hmm. Supergirl DOA, Brave and the Bold will go into production and then it will get shut down. And Superman will come out and we're just going to pray that it's good. Yeah. Well, and I, and I hope that's... I mean, and I'm a DC fan. I want to see... Well, all no, of that's, that's the craziest thing is... <clears throat> really I would go see every one of those movies. And I'm like, I truly hope <laughs> I'm absolutely wrong. I, I, I would love nothing more than if I was dead wrong and all these things happen and they're all fantastic. I just don't know that they will. And to me, it's it's the wrong approach in that man you're reaching deep into the coffers to find some obscure characters and you're picking character the other thing is it's one thing to pick obscure characters it's another to pick expensive obscure characters right the question is an obscure character yeah the question could be a very easy 10 to 15 million dollar murder investigation film Mm -hmm. right you can make that manageable and make it profitable when you're pulling Swamp Thing and the authority and the superpowers that those people have and the CGI that you're going to need, you're talking expensive movies. No. Plus, I've already, seen brand Swamp. Recognition. I've already seen Swamp Thing. That TV show for me, I loved it. And, um, you know, I think it was 10 or 12 episodes. Yeah. No, something like that. Did it, did, they did two seasons, right? I think it just wrapped up in one. <clears throat> At least it very slowly, though. I remember I wanted to see more. Because yeah. I, I like that story. No, 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 I think that's the last thing you mentioned. Like you wanted to see more. I don't remember yeah. the last, other than Pattinson's Batman in the last three or four years. I don't remember a superhero project other than that one. I'm like, man, I want to see more of that. Yeah. Every other movie, I'm kind of like, yeah, I'm good if that stops. Like, I know I liked Aquaman too quite a bit, but even that, you're like, eh, you know, I, I've yeah. seen it before. 
Um, I, I haven't even seen Aquaman yet. That's what I'm telling you guys. Yeah, no, and, and that's that's the crazy part is. And I'm like a huge DC fan. No, when you and me started watching these comic book films 10 years ago, when we started that comic book club and all that stuff that we had, yeah. We were opening day most of these things. Like if we couldn't go the whole game, day, we were we had like, like ten yeah. people going. We we'd all go. It to was movies. an event, and now it's kind of like man, it's the eighth one this year. And like I'll be, there was eight comic <clears throat> movies in theaters this year. I saw Flash in theaters. I saw Aquaman in theaters, and I think I saw Guardians of the Galaxy in theaters. And I the saw Guardians five. I didn't the Spider Verse come out. Spider Verse was this year too. I saw that one. I saw. I saw Guardians. I saw The Flash. What else came out? Well, there was Shazam. Uh, Blue Beetle. I did see Blue Beetle. There. Oh, Blue Beetle. Uh, I saw. I saw Shazam too. Yeah, okay. Shazam too. I, 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 I waited for streaming. The Marvels. I haven't seen yet. I'll wait for streaming. I did um, not go see the Marvels. Yeah. No. And that, that's. You that's know what's cool. weird is I so offered. You know to, I offered to take all the kids to go see the Marvels. Because mm-hmm. we went to the Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah. And 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 I said, hey, do you guys want to, the Marvels comes out next month. You want to go? And this is like a group of kids that, you know, I'm Jackson, I've, I've taken them to the movies for years. Yeah. Superhero movies. They were like, eh. I'm like, yeah. oh, man, this movie's no, dead. That, what's so weird yeah. is like the Marvels <laughs> was the disaster that everybody knew was coming from Marvel. They were like, like eh, read... I don't, we could skip it. I was, well, you could read all the signs sign. around Marvel this year, the declining box offices and stuff. You're like, the Marvels isn't going to do well. And it almost felt like Marvel knew that too, because like the promotion for it wasn't a lot and like compared to their normal. Um, yeah. And it's just, I think that's just the huge thing is I, I, I get Gunn wanting to announce these projects. Um, I don't think it builds excitement to announce them projects anymore. I think even us, the hardcore guys, are looking like, dude, just slow down, go slower. I mean, I, great I, Superman I, movie first, and then let's worry about getting the Swamp Thing going. But a Brave and the Bold would be cool. No, I'm I'm, I'm so oh excited for God. a possible Batman film. That Damian would be Wayne. really it'd be, cool. It'd be great. But like at the same time, I'm like, how about we make a good Superman? And then if that works, then make a sequel to Superman. Like yeah. we're worrying that about was... Supergirl and Swamp <laughs> Thing and Creature Commandos and the Authority, <laughs> like. Let's make a good Superman. If that works, then make a super sequel to that Superman. It's you know what would be cool? Anything. You know what would be cool? Let's just jump to the side. Think outside the box. Yeah. Gun. Sergeant Rock. Oh, yeah. No, you talk about... No, and that, that's the brands that I think DC could get into where... Sergeant Rock, dude. Well, no, I'm like, one of the cool know. things is when you go back to the early superhero movies that worked blade was an amazing movie because even if you didn't like superheroes it's just a it guy was outside the genre it's it a guy out. hunting vampires that happens to be in a superhero universe there's a ton of movies like that that get made and i think that's what superhero movies need to go to the over cgi filled big battle with a big monster at the end of the film thing those days have got to end you got to yeah. tell more more compelling stories that people care about. And I, and I think that to me, if Gunn gets anything right in this universe, you have to make us love Clark Kent and that he's Superman is cool, but we love Clark Kent because that's where Marvel worked. Marvel had everybody love Tony Stark. And the fact that Tony Stark was Iron Man was awesome, but you cared about Tony Stark. And do you like think that that's, stop that? Do you think that's what was missing from Man of Steel? Yeah, no. Well, I think Man of Steel, I, I do like Man of Steel more than most people, but I think the entire DCEU, you never cared about Bruce Wayne. You care about Bruce Wayne if you're a Batman fan who already loves Bruce Wayne. Yeah. But if you look at Batman's story in the DCEU, what do you care about Bruce Wayne? There's no emotional tether to Bruce's story. He has no love when interests. You, when you go back to Michael Keaton, life. when you go back to Michael Keaton, you cared about Bruce Wayne. Well, I mean, even recent. And- Christian Bale. Bruce's relationship with Alfred, his relationship with Rachel, his relationship with Gordon, how well he, his relationship with Lucius Fox, Bruce Wayne's life was important to you. And it was awesome that he was Batman, but you cared about Bruce. In all honesty, the DCEU, there was no Clark Kent storyline. There was no Bruce Wayne storyline. 
there wasn't really anything for any of the kids. And like Barry Allen in the Flash movie, his debut movie is about time travel and him meeting an alternate version of him. And it's like, you haven't even established who Barry is yet. Why do I want to see an alternate version of him? Like, it just, it never works. And I think that's the thing that Gunn can hopefully do is if Gunn can find a way to make human stories that happen to feature superheroes, <clears throat> that yeah. will be successful. But if you want to do the bombastic, huge superhero action film, it's not going to work. And it's it's one of the things that you and I are comic readers, kind of close, close everything out. One of the things is there's very few event comics that I love. I love the individual comics. Yeah, I don't really too. love when they do like the Crisis on Infinite Earths type stories. That one's good. But the majority, every year DC has another crisis or something like that. And I'll be honest, I don't really buy those. I've got PTSD from all the crises. Well, okay. and mainly because the crises that DC does, <laughs> none of them care. There's no human story. It's just action for action's sake. And oh, there's a big giant monster. And instead, like when I pick up the regular issue of The Flash, I'm going to get that slice of life of this is what's going on with Barry Allen and his job and his life and his, his iris and all that. That's what compels you to read the story. The, the Flash action scenes are fantastic but you also need to give a crap about Barry and Iris and all of them. And I think that's what we have forgotten. But let us know what you think below. Do you think any of these DCU films will happen outside of Superman Legacy? What do you? What would you do? What movies do you think DC could do to get back? Um, as always, we appreciate any comments you guys leave. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe. And we will catch you in the next video. Thanks.